Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Happy New Year's Day everyone, please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Harness the power of the currency exchange planner, mention the denarian and get the pre-negotiated price for my subscribers. Start the new year off right, invest in yourself and your family's well-being today. Introducing the new Carrot Bar platform. Now is the time to get involved so I can help you to help yourself. It's free to sign up and you will be ahead of everyone else in Dinarland. Get yourself set up today and be a part of Team Denarian. The Carrot Bar program is the true future of money. It takes the concept of a gold-backed currency and the blockchain technology to the next level. Imagine being a part of Bitcoin when it first started and what it is worth today. You have the opportunity of a lifetime to get in on the ground floor of this program with me. Do yourself a favor and pause this video right now and go check it out. The link to the Carrot Bar platform is in the description drop down below. I encourage you, stay ahead of the rest, take the initiative, and join me today on the blockchain-based Carrot Bar platform and let me help you to start off the year right. Okay you're back. First off. Today I want to congratulate the over 200 of you that did join the Carrot Bar platform so far. You have seen the power of the program firsthand and let me tell you, it's just going to get better from here as you learn more. 2020 will be the year this program takes off, and you are center stage. I look forward to working with all of you, together we will pave the way. Let's get started with today's news shall we? First article of interest for today. Salah's meeting with the Al Fatah leaders has ended and he is expected to announce the name of the Prime Minister on Thursday. Informed sources revealed that the meeting of the President of the Republic with the Al Fatah alliance will lead to the selection of one of the candidates to form the new government. The source said that the meeting of the leaders of the Construction Alliance and President of the Republic Baram Salih ended this evening by agreeing to announce the name of the Prime Minister designate on Thursday. The source did not reveal the name of the agreed candidate. This comes after dramatic developments in the Iraqi situation, after American planes bombed a camp for the popular mobilization in the al Qaim region, which led to the siege of the American embassy in Baghdad and an attempt to storm it by demonstrators led by leaders in the popular crowd. Leaks have previously indicated that there are three potential candidates for Prime Minister, Staff General Abdul Ghani al-Assadi, Staff Lieutenant Iyad al-Salhi, and former Minister Mohammad Tafiq Alawi. Next article of interest. Pompeo. President Trump is continuing to work on a three-point project in Iraq. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mark Pompeo, confirmed on Wednesday, 1st January 2020, that the American president is continuing to work on achieving his project in Iraq noting that what happened in front of the American embassy building in the center of the capital Baghdad came by order from Iran, he said. The United States of America is interested in Iraq, and we want the following points first, a free Iraq, a second independent, and a sovereign third, Pompeo said in an interview with Fox News that followed him Baghdad today. He stressed, President of the United States of America, Donald Trump continues to work on this project. We saw the Iranian people demanding that their leaders act differently through protests, and unfortunately, the Iranians' response was to kill hundreds of citizens, he added. But we also saw in Beirut and in Iraq, we saw the demonstrators who were not in our embassy, so they are real demonstrators, and they are not supported by Iran, and broke out in front of the headquarters of the American embassy in Iraq, since yesterday morning, Tuesday. Massive demonstrations protesting the strikes launched by the United States, last Sunday, to the sites of Hezbollah brigades in the borderlands of Iraq and Syria, and killed at least 25 people, according to the statements of the popular crowd. U.S. President Donald Trump accused Iran of being behind the attack on the embassy, threatening Iran that it would take full responsibility for these events and participated in the demonstrations condemning the American bombing, in front of the American embassy, the Secretary General of Assay Baal al-Haq, K. Kazali, the Secretary General of the Badr Organization, Hadi al-Amiri, 
and the head of the popular mobilization organization, Fela Al Fayyad, and his deputy Abu Mahdi Al Muhandis, and the deputy secretary general for Saraya Al Khorasani, Hamid Al Jazri, while Hayes and Salem, a member of parliament, raised the representatives of the popular mobilization and the Hezbollah brigades on the embassy's external fence. Earlier today, Wednesday, the popular crowd called the protesters, near the American embassy, in the green zone, in the center of the capital, Baghdad, to withdraw. The crowd's media website stated that the latter called the masses located near the American embassy to withdraw in respect of the decision of the Iraqi government, which ordered this end to preserve the prestige of the state, adding that, your message has arrived. Next article of interest. The U.S. State Department is talking about upcoming airstrikes. This is Trump's goal. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, commented on Wednesday, January 1, 2020 about the possibility of the United States launching future airstrikes on military sites in the Middle East. Responding to a question about whether airstrikes would be directed at Iranian-backed power centers in the region, Pompeo said, I simply say that we are committed to the project that we started on when we made a political decision to direct President Trump that we are going to drive away the Islamic Republic of Iran to create stability in all over the Middle East. We remain fully committed to this mission, he stressed. The Trump administration has put real pressure on the Islamic Republic of Iran, and we will continue to do so, and as you saw the president saying today, we will continue to direct accountability to the Islamic Republic of Iran wherever we find their activity, and we will make sure that we have the resources to do this. Regarding Washington's intention to send more ships in the region, Pompeo commented, I will leave that to the Ministry of Defense to talk about the details, but we do not make mistakes about President Trump's directives to both the State Department and the Department of Defense as his instructions were to ensure that we have all that we need to do the tasks that he had placed before us regarding defeating Iran. Washington has called for the formation of an international coalition to protect international shipping in the Gulf waters and the Strait of Hormuz, following the escalation of tension in the Gulf region after the United States sent additional military forces after an attack on two oil tankers in the Sea of Oman in addition to the downing of a modern American reconnaissance plane with an Iranian missile over the Strait of Hormuz, and attack by drones on Saudi oil facilities, which is a proposal that Tehran has rejected on several occasions, stressing that securing navigation in the Gulf waters is its responsibility, and the responsibility of the countries of the region, and that the presence of foreign forces in the region will increase tension and instability. Next article of interest money drain operations and the deliberate collapse of the Iraqi economy, Galet Abdul Karim. When we follow the Iraqi economic reality and anticipate the events taking place in the country's economic system that face deliberate attrition and mismanagement, very frightening as if the current administration insists on wasting public funds and intends to slaughter the national economy through its irrational practices especially in the area of military movement for the hard currency and the national currency inside and outside the country there are a large number of violations committed by the management of the Central Bank of Iraq and the economic management of the executive authorities in this important and very dangerous sector. Among the most important violations that we monitor, which will cause the elimination of the Iraqi economy completely in the near future. First, the movement of cash for hard currency inside and outside Iraq is completely uncontrolled and there are no real data for the amounts going out and entering the country. Also, there are a lot of private banks engaged in a wide activity in transferring money out of Iraq with fictional numbers. What happens in a simple way is that the amount of the amounts coming out is greater than the amount of the amounts entering the country and this explicit violation confirms the existence of a systematic exhaustion process of cash and the difficult balances of Iraq and that this the violation forces the Central Bank of Iraq to borrow from abroad in order to fill the large deficit in its dilapidated balance which leads to increased indebtedness and subject the Iraqi economy to strict World Bank laws. Second the salary settlement mechanism implemented by Iraqi banks did not find a benefit by controlling the movement of hard currency, 
especially since the majority of the owners of explosive income live outside the walls of the country and that most of these monthly salaries go out from Iraq to neighboring countries and the world in hard currency without any control or even imposing a specific tax to those huge sums that go out every month to political figures and everyone who has huge benefits, including political prisoners, the Rafa law, and others. The frightening figure of 5 million employees out of a total of 8 million transfers his salary and monthly retirement outside of Iraq, which means that Iraq spends a third of its annual budget outside the country. This is what is translated into reality for the economic level of the Iraqi street, and you find that currency circulating inside the country is very weak. And the rest of the worn-out classes are not allowed to benefit from the monthly cash movement inside the country. Third, an important factor in wasting hard currency is the deterioration of the health status of the country and what the poor Iraqi citizen flies before the rich to travel outside the country for treatment with free sums estimated annually about $5.9 billion, wasted outside the home walls. Fourth, hard currency depletion operations are continuing, especially in the absence of important productive sectors such as agriculture and industry massive spending on food commodities and luxury products, and most parts, cars and raw materials have been fully imported to some local products. Greed for consumption, and if we talked in the language of the record numbers, we will find Iraq as an evil country in consumption only from crops coming from Iran for a period of three months. Its consumption is estimated at $6 billion and its weakness from Turkey, and also the China market which provides Iraq with multiple services annually reaching $19.33 billion. Not to mention the contracts of the Ministry of Health to import medicines, as well as the contracts of the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Electricity, Oil, and Transportation, and the most important contracts of the Ministry of Defense and the Interior which are experiencing fictional deals borne by Iraq because of the crisis of the permanent struggle against terrorism. These indices are not fixed and subject to increase and decrease according to the market requirements and the Iraqi situation, but if we talk about the reality of imports, we will not find more than the value of Iraqi oil imports trapped between policy brokers and profit companies, contracts that feed on Iraqi oil and is the only source of strength for this country rich in resources and poor in capabilities. The most important question remains. When will the depletion of Iraqi money be controlled, and how? Next article of interest. Foreign policy. Baram Saleh provided the greatest service to U.S. interests in Iraq. The head of strategic research at the U.S. National Defense University, Richard D. Hooker, Iraqi President Baram Saleh provided the greatest service to U.S. interests by resisting the nomination of a prime minister that was not in line with Washington's policy. Hooker said in the article published by the website of the American Foreign Policy Institute for Studies, technology and cyberspace have become a weapon with an impact on international and regional equations. Social media has helped us organize a revolution on Facebook and WhatsApp in Iraq in recent months in this revolution so far. The national interest of the United States has served more than the U.S. military campaign in Iraq in 2003. He added that this revolution or protest has placed the Shiite government in Iraq, which was a threat to American interests, on the brink of collapse, where despair, inefficiency, lack of statehood, and political instability have spread throughout Iraq. It is very important for us to prevent the re-establishment of a Shiite state that conflicts with the American national interest in Iraq, as there are political unrest throughout the country now. He pointed out that, through a call he made with the former Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs and former advisor for Middle East policy Robert Karim, he assured me that, we America currently have the upper hand in Iraq 10 years ago, and Barim Saleh provided the greatest service to American interests from while resisting the nomination of a prime minister and preventing the formation of the rule of law in Iraq. I have always said that the Kurdish tribes, their capabilities and intentions are the strategic depth of America in Iraq and the eastern Mediterranean region. He explained that Iraq could become today a safe and trustworthy country for the United States if a military coup occurred, 
so the next Iraqi government must be formed outside the existing blocs and this is my serious advice to the Pentagon advisors and President Trump. Next article of interest. Parliamentary legal. The current year will witness the passage of controversial laws. Member of the Parliamentary Law Committee, Salim Hamza, confirmed on Wednesday that the Parliament intends to pass controversial laws during the new year, including oil and gas laws, the federal court and the organization of government work. Hamza said in a statement to Information that dozens of drafts of the law are still in the hands of the Parliament and they need to be passed. Hamza added, the political consensus is the main factor in passing laws, especially controversial, and we will work within the committee to reformulate and pass controversial laws. He explained that oil and gas, the court of law, and organizing the work of the government are the most prominent controversial laws that will be passed during the current year. Next article of interest. The Customs announces the registration of the highest revenues that support the state budget after oil revenues. The General Authority for Customs announced today, Tuesday, the registration of the Center of Comil Trebel border revenue on Monday, amounting to more than 1 billion dinars. The authority said in a statement that it received Alfred News a copy of it, that the continuous increase in the rates of revenue achieved in most of its customs centers comes as a natural result of the efforts made by its cadres working there as well as distinguished management during the current period. She added, that its revenues are entered in the account of the Ministry of Finance with the Central Bank of Iraq, which is subject to auditing of the Office of Financial Supervision, and thus be registered the highest revenue that provides the state budget after oil revenues despite the challenges and constraints and acute shortage of the number of qualified employees and the absence of the minimum requirements and means and devices of customs work. Next article of interest. Sheikh Holly. The attack on the American embassy in Baghdad cost Iraq $100 million. Member of the House of Representatives, and the candidate for Prime Minister, Fake Sheikh Holly, confirmed today, Wednesday, that the attack on the American embassy in Baghdad has cost the Iraqi government more than $100 million. Sheikh Holly said in a tweet followed by al Akbaria that the United States appreciates the damage of the attacker's attack on its embassy in Baghdad at $100 million, an American price of offense, Dor, Dor and Yaguba. He added, Iraq will bury it from the budget of his people, pointing out that it demands that the leaders of the attacks on the embassy be handed over quietly or leave it to them to hunt them with the Kazwa or Zinc. Today's international newspapers dealt with angry protests that took place in front of the United States Embassy in Baghdad and the results of many comparisons between the recent attack and previous attacks on American diplomatic facilities, and highlighted the role of Iraq as a collision point between the influence of the United States and Iran. Next article of interest. China takes another step away from USD hegemony. The China Foreign Exchange Trade System, CFETS, announced that effective January 1, 2020, the system will adjust weights for CFETS RMB index, decreasing the weighting of the US dollar for the second time in the currency basket's history from 22.40% to 21.59%, and increasing the euro from 16.34% to 17.40%. The change could signal further disassociation with US dollar due to ongoing US China trade difficulties. Also, Reports of increased trade with the EU over 2019 and the fact that both China and the European Union are actively working on central bank digital currencies CBDCs, have some speculating that dollar hegemony is being challenged by the move. Once again, I would like to wish all denarians a happy and prosperous new year for us all. Hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to find me on the other platforms so you get news in real time as I get it. Harness the power of the Currency Exchange Planner today. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN for the additional pre-negotiated discount for my subscribers. Time is running out. Join me on the blockchain gold-backed carrot bar platform today. You don't have to wait until you're filthy rich to get involved. It's free. I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction. Think about it.
I would be shooting myself in the foot. I would not recommend something I do not stand behind 110%. Did you ever hear the term, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.